Hello scholars! Today we are going to be introducing a couple of new pieces of safety equipment. We are going to have our gloves. We are going to have... Where did I put those goggles at? I don't even know. Oh, there they are. Ah, we are going to have our safety goggles. Get those positioned right there. And we are going to have a tool that is called a hot plate. Why do we call it a hot plate? Because it's hot. And that is the reason why we need protective equipment for our hands. These are safety gloves. You've probably seen a form of safety hand equipment at your residence. Whenever your mom is cooking and she's got the, the pot on the stove and she grabs that oven mitt and she puts it on so that she doesn't burn her hand. That's the reason that I have these as well for the exact same purpose. Why? Because we have to be safe. Even though we're scientists, scientists, safe, safe scientists, that's who we are. Yes, absolutely and indeed. What are we talking about today? We're still talking about matter. We're still talking about physical properties of matter. We're still talking about classifying matter into groups based on these physical properties, but we're adding three new words. What are the three words that we're going to add today? We're going to talk about predicting, we're going to talk about observing, and we're going to talk about recording these predictions. Now, you can actually record predictions and observations as we go throughout anything that we do. All good scientists do this. So as you are doing an investigation or when you're trying to figure something out, regardless of whether it's an experimental, whether it's an investigation, whether it's descriptive, there's going to be questions that we ask, right? So we're going to wonder why stuff happens. We're going to wonder what would happen if. We're going to wonder all kinds of things. All great scientists ask questions. So ask lots of questions. Ask lots of questions, lots of questions, and don't stop asking questions. So what are some questions that we can ask? When we ask a question, we're going to get this thing kind of formulated, and then we're going to start telling what we think is going to happen, okay? So we can make a prediction, what we think is going to happen. After we make a prediction, we're going to have to look at it. We're going to have to observe. We observe with our eyes a lot of times, especially in an investigation like this that's going to be involving thermal energy. I am not going to observe with my bare hands. I'm not going to use that as a sensor. No, I'm going to observe with my eyes and then I'm going to write my observations down on a piece of paper. And that's where the record comes in. Record is where we take the things that we observe and we put them into words. I noticed that this was happening. I smelt this. I observed this. I thought that this would happen and then something else happened. It's all kinds of things that we can observe, but we take those things and we record or we write them down. And that's what all good scientists do. All good scientists have to write. Writing, science. Writing, science. Like they're like best friends. They could, If I could shake my own hand, I, I would shake my own hand because writing and science are so closely connected. All right, what are we going to be talking about today? We're still talking about matter, but we're going to be talking about how thermal energy affects how matter can change. And a great way to do that is with something as simple that we are all familiar with called water. Yes, we all know water. We have all known that water can be frozen and it turns into ice, right? So the solid state of, well, just drop them on the ground. The solid state of water, see if I can get it with these gloves, is ice, right? So when water hits zero degrees Celsius, it turns into the solid form of water. And the word that we use to describe that is we call it ice. Now we've all had an injury before where we had to stick ice off in a bag and then we stick that bag on our hand or on our knee or something like that. We've all had a time where we were out at the grocery store. We were at, what is it, McDonald's or one of these fancy restaurant places like Arby's and we filled it with ice and we noticed that it got very, very cold to where we can drink it, right? But ice is affected by thermal energy as well. So if I was to take my ice cube, because I've got a couple of ice cubes, and I was to stick them off in here, and then I was to add thermal energy with my hot plate. So now I'm gonna put my little goggles on. <clears throat> I'm going to add thermal energy, and then we are going to observe what happens as the thermal energy <coughs> is conducted to the ice cube. So as the ice cubes are interacting with this thermal energy, what is going to happen? Now, this is where I could make a prediction. Many of you already know what's going to happen. Like, you've got this down. Y'all are going to say, an ice cube will blank because of all of my past experiences in life. I remember when I was at Wendy's and I grabbed this ice cube out and I held it in my hand and this happened. In fact, if you have an ice cube, through the duration of this, just grab it 
and wrap your hand around it and hold it as I'm talking to see what happens. See what you observe. And then when you observe it, record it down. What did you feel? What did you notice happening? What happened to the ice cube? It's a really simple way to explain what we're doing. Now, as I'm sitting here looking at this ice cube, I'm noticing that the ice is definitely a solid. I know it's a solid because it has a definite shape, it has a definite volume, it's not malleable, can't bend it, that's not to it. Like it's very, very, it is a definite shape, definite volume. But I'm noticing that it used to be only a solid ice cube in there, but now I'm starting to see liquid water begin to form in the bottom of my pan. So that means that I'm observing the thermal energy is causing the ice solid form of water to become a liquid turning back into water. Now, how can I put that into words? Our word that we use to describe that is we can say that the ice is melting because of the thermal energy. Very, very normal thing. We've all observed it. We've all seen it. We've all dealt with it. But now we're doing this in a scientific way. I have my safety equipment. I have my hot plate. I have my gloves. I have my goggles. I have my ice. We have our thermal energy coming up. And now we're doing science. So we have our journal. We're making all of our annotations in our journal. We're recording. What do I see? What do I smell? If I smell anything, this is called wafting. You never just throw your nose into something. You always waft the air back to you to be safe. What am I hearing? I don't really hear anything, I, but most of my observations are going to be what I see. Now, what I want you to do today, I want you to think. You've seen what's happening here and you're still observing what's happening here, but I want you to think, what would happen? Mr. Wash, I really enjoy chocolate. I do. I can't, I, li I, just, I like Hershey's. I like Reese's chocolate. I like Snickers chocolate. I like just chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Oh, chocolate is so wonderful. My son's favorite thing is Hershey's chocolate. He will sell me out for some Hershey's chocolate for a giant Hershey's bar. But what would happen if I took my Hershey's that I'm going to have for lunch today and I walked outside with it and I just sat outside with my Hershey's bar in my hand while the temperature is 100 degrees. Temperature is 100 degrees outside. It's really hot outside. What am I going to observe happening to my chocolate? That is your task today. That's what I want you to record in your journal. That's what I want you to think about. Changing states of matter. And you hear this right now. I can literally hear. Now it's starting to make a slight popping noise. So I'm definitely going to turn the heat off and close this investigation out because my solid ice is now almost completely liquid water because the thermal energy was added and we have got to observe how thermal energy can change states of matter. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed it. You guys are amazing, wonderful, awesome scientists. We'll be back on with more ways that matter can change because not only can it go from a solid to a liquid, there's actually a state change where we can go from a liquid to a gas. And we'll continue talking about that as well. We're out.